The Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Galatians that Jesus died on the cross and became a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us in Christ Jesus. What is this important blessing that required Jesus to die in order for us to receive it? It is important for us to understand this because knowledge is power. Some time back, my good friend Rick Godwin shared with me his revelation on the blessing of Abraham and it blew me away. Today, I want to share this revelation with you so that you can position yourself in faith to receive it. Abraham had a divine encounter with the Son of God. That amazing encounter brought him into an eternal covenant with God Most High. But first, let's welcome the King of Glory into our midst with a time of praise. feeling burned out mentally and physically. Maybe you are stuck, emotionally drained from strained relationships with your spouse, at work, or with family. How can you keep going? The Bible says that God wants to carry your burdens. But what does that mean for you? Kong He has a three-disc series called Presence of God, Heaven on Earth that will strengthen your faith and will teach you how, through the Holy Spirit, God can sustain you. Something in your life is just drained out because of a crisis in your family, in your relationship. It's been going on for a long time. One touch, the woman with this chronic 12-year disease touched Jesus and everything was changed. Kong and his wife, Son, have been called to bring God's Word to you every week to see you blessed and helped. Today, they want you to have this life-changing three-disc resource called Presence of God, Heaven on Earth. Please visit konghee.com to place your order. Learn of God's assurance to us that you'll find rest in His presence. Click on this special offer and we'll send you Presence of God, Heaven on Earth. Live in perfect peace and complete rest. I want to start by going to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13 and verse 14, an amazing scripture over here. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, the Bible is very clear over here. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You know that verse 13 says, Jesus died on the cross. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, He did that not just so that we can get salvation, but that verse 14 can become a reality in your life and in my life, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us in Christ Jesus. Everybody say, the blessing of Abraham. Now, if this blessing required our Lord Jesus Christ 
to die on the cross for you and me to shed His blood so that we are able to receive it, then this blessing must be very, very important, right? If it required Jesus to die for it, it must be important to you. It must be important to me. And if it's important, I want to receive it, I want to get it. But what exactly is the blessing of Abraham? For years, I've heard many pastors preaching about this, many Bible teachers talking about this, but to be perfectly honest, none to date has properly defined what exactly is the blessing of Abraham. Now, impartation comes through understanding. Impartation comes through understanding. Jesus Christ says in the Gospel, Matthew 13 and verse 12, For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Now, Jesus says, for whoever has. Has what? If you read this passage, the context here in Matthew 13, the verse before and after verse 12, Jesus was talking about understanding. He was talking about understanding. Whoever has more understanding about the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, more impartation, more blessing will be given and you will have it in abundance. So if we don't know and don't understand what the blessing of Abraham is, how are we going to receive this impartation? How are we going to get it? Well, praise God. Recently, in the last one, two months, I heard my friend Rick Godwin taught it, and I got to be honest with you, it's possibly the best definition I ever heard, the clearest definition on what this blessing is. Now, to understand, we need to go to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 13. In Genesis 13, the Old Testament, Abraham and his family came out of Egypt and was going back to Canaan. By now, God had greatly prospered him. He was very rich. He had flocks of cattle and sheep and goats and silver and gold to such great abundance. In fact, the Bible says that he and his nephew Lot were so blessed, the land itself could not contain all their livestock, all their cattle, their sheep, and their goats. Well, by now, Lot had become independent-minded. He didn't want to be under the covering of Abraham. And there was growing tension and resentment in both camp. Lot has grown up. He says, I don't want to be under the shadow of my uncle anymore. I want to be my own man. Abraham being who he was, he said, Lord, I love you. I give you the first choice of the land that you want. Whatever God has given to us, you can make the first choice. If you go to the left, I go to the right. If you go to the right, I go to the left. Abraham gave him the first choice. And Lord chose the land near Sodom and Gomorrah because it was a fertile land with green pastures. So it seemed like a good land in the natural. And he left Abraham with Canaan. Now, in those days, everything was wild. We are like talking about the wild, wild west. There was no rule of law. So warlords declared themselves as kings. And they had their own armies to terrorize the people and rob as bandits from the people. So when we come to Genesis 14, there was a war. Four kings in the region came against and attacked the five kings of Canaan. The armies of Sodom and Gomorrah were slain. Lord and his families were taken captives. Abraham heard about that. His love for Lot was still there. So he got his 318 trained men, his own personal commando unit. This is like his own ancient time Navy SEALs. 318 men. And they went in to rescue Lot and his family. He won. As a result, Abraham became even richer by all the spoils of war. Now he had 
sheep, cattle, goats, like you cannot imagine, cannot believe it. He got so much of the enemy's clothing and their silver and their gold and their jewelry. He had all their weapons and their horses and he got slaves out of the spoils of war. And on their way back from all the drama, suddenly something amazing happened. Abraham met Melchizedek. Everybody say Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Now, Melchizedek, the Bible says a king and a priest. Now, Melchizedek is what theologian would call a theophany. That means he was the appearance of God in a human form before he was born of a virgin Mary. So this was the Son of God in the Old Testament before he became Jesus Christ. So Abraham met the Son of God. Well, in the New Testament, in Hebrews chapter 7, it talks about King Melchizedek, who was a great high priest like Jesus. Melchizedek, that word means righteousness. So King Melchizedek, he was the king of righteousness. He was the ruler of Salem. Salem means peace, like Jerusalem, the city of peace. And Jesus was the prince of peace. This man was the prince of peace. And Hebrews 7 says he was an eternal being. He was without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, no beginning, no ending, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. So there is no doubt whatsoever. King Melchizedek was the Son of God. So Abraham had an encounter with the Son of God. Now, there is, now Melchizedek met Abraham in the middle of the road. He stopped him invited him to his hand to have communion, holy communion. He was going to make a covenant with Abraham. Now, let's look at Genesis 14, verse 18 to verse 20. That is our main text for today. Verse 18, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and he was the priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Now, take note. Church, listen, this is the only place in the whole Bible that clearly defines for us what exactly is the blessing of Abraham with Jesus Christ himself shed his blood, went to the cross to die on that cross so that you and I can receive it. All right? So this is the blessing. Verse 19, he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand and he gave him a tithe of all. There are three parts to this blessing. Number one, the blessing of elevation. Number two, the blessing of possession. Number three, the blessing of dominion. And I believe this is what God is going to give to us not just prophetically, but in reality in 2014. And tonight, we want to look at all three of them. Number one, the blessing of elevation. The blessing of elevation. Now, notice the first statement was this. Blessed be Abraham of God Most High. What is his name? God Most High. Until now, the only name of God that was introduced to the people until now in Genesis 14 was that name Elohim, God the Creator. In the beginning, Elohim, the Creator God, created the heavens and the earth. God has yet to introduce Himself as Yahweh. That only came in Exodus chapter 3. God has yet to introduce Himself as El Shaddai or Jehovah Jireh or Jehovah Rapha. So this is the first time, and of all the names the Son of God could use, He chose to introduce His Heavenly Father as El Elyon. 
El Elyon. All right, the God Most High, the God who is the highest. Now, why was it important for Abraham to know that? Because, first of all, he just came out of idolatry. He came from the Earl of the Chaldees, which is modern-day Iraq. And it was a place, and in fact, if you go to where Abraham came in Iraq, you can see a lot of ancient temples, ancient ruins. It was a place of tremendous idol worship. They worshipped many idols. So God revealed Himself to Abraham by saying, Hey, I am the Most High God. There is no other idols higher than me. I am the one and only God. But secondly, more importantly, the Lord was saying this, I am bring you into a covenant relationship with a God who is the Most High. Now, one translation says, He is the God of elevation. That means as you put your faith in Him, you will become the head and not the tail. You will be above and not beneath. He's going to elevate you. Now, remember Jesus in the Lord's Prayer, what's the first thing He says? He says we got to hallow the name of God. That means you got to focus on your name. you got to put your faith in that name. Whatever name of God you focus in, and you put your faith in, you will experience that blessing. And you will become what that name says. I'll give you an example. When you know Him and understand that He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord your healer, you will experience His healing power. The more you focus on that name and put your faith in the name of Jehovah Rapha, you will become healthy. Sickness will go away. Strength will come into your body. But if you are sick and you don't know that God is your healer, you will be sick all your life. You will be weak all your life. Whatever you focus and put your faith in, in that name of God, that name will become what you experience and a reality in your life. You know what? God is our alien. He's the God who elevates. He's the elevating God. He's going to lift up your life. You're going to find this year things will start to improve. Businesses will start to pick up. Your relationships will start to get better. You've got to start meditating, believing, and speaking out and confessing, God, you are the most high God. God, you're higher than any mountain that I face. God, there's nothing higher than you. God, I'm going to experience the new height and elevation you're going to bring into my life and into my family. You know, Johnny Suragi came to SOT in 1996. He was young and on fire for God. Halfway through the Bible school, he got really discouraged because his roommate quitted Bible school and went back to Indonesia. Johnny decided, I'm going to persevere and finish my diploma program. He persevered through the entire year. Went back to the city of Medan, very poor and uncertain about his future. Now, in a city where most of the bigger churches and successful churches were being pastored by Chinese pastors, or Manadonese pastor, he was a Batak. Could he actually, as a Batak man, build a great ministry? He had his uncertainty, but he also had his faith in God. He knew in Christ it's not about your race, it's about your faith. So he put his faith in Jesus, started believing, God, you can do something through me. Now, one of the things he learned by spending a year in City Harvest is to love God wholeheartedly and to love people fervently. To find a hurt and heal it, come on, talk to me, to find a need and meet it. One big need in the city of Maidan is that he noticed there's a lot of mentally insane people roaming the streets. Nobody is doing anything about them. So he began to have a burden. God, there's a need here. They are mentally insane people. I'm talking about insane people. Roaming the streets. God, what can I do to share your love with them and to help them? Well, in 2008, my wife's son donated a portion of her royalties 
to help Johnny start Sunshine Rehabilitation Center for the mentally ill and the mentally insane. Johnny built it on a beautiful hill on five acres of land just outside of the city. And he decided to use medical doctors, Christian counseling, prayer to help all the patients. So the doctors would treat them. He would give them Bible studies. He used our materials to teach them the word. And he'll pray for them. His wife, Tina, herself went back to school because of the burden and the vision and graduated with a Master of Psychology. So they really wanted to help these people. You know what, friends? Many of the patients have been totally healed of mental illnesses and are living productive lives today. Some went on to graduate from universities. Johnny also started Harvest Children Care as a medical outreach for poor and needy children. Over the years, this has brought relief and help to thousands of poor families in Medan that couldn't afford to see doctors. You know, Indonesia has 247 million people. It's the fourth largest country in the world. Last year, 2013, Johnny was asked to meet the Minister of Social Development in Jakarta to talk about humanitarian work and social issues. Last month, just before Christmas, he was presented with Indonesia Top 10 Social Worker of the Year Award. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord praise. What's happening? What's happening to a poor Bata man? He's experiencing the blessing of elevation. That is the blessing of elevation that's coming your way in 2014. In 2001, Johnny started Indonesia Harvest Church. You see, he has a big vision. I said, why don't you just start with Maiden Harvest Church? He went to register Indonesia Harvest Church. Today, he has three other branches, one in the south, one in the east, one in the west. Year after year, he sent his workers to our SOT, get them trained. He said, look, if I, my life has changed here, then the smartest thing I could do is to let the stirring leadership of Bob <laughs> train the rest of my workers. Hallelujah. I was just there for his Christmas candlelight service. It was amazing. It was, it was like City Harvest Church in Meron City. You know, a thousand old people came. Many gave their hearts to Jesus Christ. I tell you, friends, this is what God is going to do. God is going to elevate us just like he elevated Johnny because he's El Alion, the God Most High. Psalm 75. Psalm 75 says he specializes in promotion. He's the God of promotion. Promotion doesn't come from the east, from the west, from the south. Promotion comes from the Lord. And God loves to do that. He loves to elevate people throughout Bible history, like Joseph, from the pit to the palace. He specializes in helping people who are fearful or feel hopeless, like Gideon and would raise them up so that they are able to become mighty men and women of valor. Jesus specializes in taking prostitutes and tax collectors and sinners and drunkards and make them apostles and leaders to change the world. When we come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, when we come to know Him as the covenant God, El Elyon, He takes us to where He is the Most High. You may say, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm in a mess. I understand what it means to be in a mess. He will, he will fix you in whatever mess you're in right here. And because Jesus is elevated, He's going to lift you up and sit you together with Him in the heavenly places far above <laughs> principalities and powers and every demonic control. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. I really believe that God wants to bless you and bring you into a life of elevation, possession, and dominion. Just consider this. There are so many names of God in the Bible, but the very first name that the Son of God revealed to us was El Elyon, the God Most High. This is because God wants you to know that above all else, He is the God of elevation, and He can lift you up and out of every difficult circumstance. If today you're feeling down and out, 
God wants to meet you at where you're at and bring you higher to where He is. But first, you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Is Jesus your Savior and Lord? Or have you neglected your relationship with Him? Why don't you say this prayer with me right now? Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and becoming a curse for me. That the blessing of Abraham might come on me. I've been far away from you, but right now, I invite you to come into my life. Cleanse me and heal me of every sin and backsliding. Lift me higher and elevate me hereafter. In your name I pray. Amen. Are you feeling burned out mentally and physically? Maybe you are stuck, emotionally drained from strained relationships with your spouse, at work, or with family. How can you keep going? The Bible says that God wants to carry your burdens. But what does that mean for you? Kong He has a three-disc series called Presence of God, Heaven on Earth that will strengthen your faith and will teach you how, through the Holy Spirit, God can sustain you. Something in your life is just drained out because of a crisis in your family, in your relationship. It's been going on for a long time. One touch, the woman with this chronic 12-year disease touched Jesus and everything was changed. Kong and his wife, Son, have been called to bring God's Word to you every week to see you blessed and helped. Today, they want you to have this life-changing three-disc resource called Presence of God, Heaven on Earth. Please visit konghee.com to place your order. Learn of God's assurance to us that you'll find rest in His presence. Click on this special offer and we'll send you Presence of God, Heaven on Earth. Live in perfect peace and complete rest. I want you to know today that you're greatly blessed and highly favored in Christ. By faith, you're seated in the heavenly places through Christ Jesus. Be blessed and bye.